there's a few I guess that everyone faces but the, the, the main one uh, it's often overlooked is just keeping everyone safe um, within our own company like that comes from two parts basically um, there's the human side of it where we, we all have families we all have uh, people say very close was that potentially are vulnerable uh, so we have to look after that side of things but then we're an essential service so we're providing um just your regular products as well as your PP to say to nursing homes, to the HSC, um, to all the care centres. And if we're not there, that's a major arm of distribution that's taken away from them, you know. Um, so we have to make sure that we're, we've been able to stay open. So from early days, um, we really established uh, early protocols just in line with the international compliance at the time, just so people can work from home where we could. Um, uh, PPE was given to staff family because obviously COVID doesn't stop at five o'clock it's 24 7 uh, so we we're very cognizant of the fact that people had to go home there's weekends there was lives to be lived but we were just trying to give them the extra support uh, so that we could kind of maintain that safety and that continuation uh, so that was very important to us and, and and still is and I suppose the hard thing about it is it's just so hard to stay on top of it you know everyone is everyone has some fatigue at different points uh, so we've tried to keep it fresh, um, move things around, keep everyone happy. Um, and so that's, that's been something that we've achieved because we've been very lucky, I guess, in that front, because we'd have a major logistical effort from our own um, warehouse here in Limerick. We're like, we've 65,000 square foot uh, of a building where we're sending out thousands of orders on a daily basis. So there's a lot of coming and going. And we've managed to maintain that at a safe, uh, safe level. Um, on top of that, in terms of uh, the challenge, the early days were the real challenge, and that was um, supply and so demand was obviously everywhere. Um, and we we were just lucky, I guess, if if we, if we didn't want to blow our own trumpet, that we were uber prepared for Brexit. Uh, we had a lot of stock. We were uh, ready for one um, kind of nasty challenge, and we were presented with another. So we were prepared in terms of stock. So we were able to look after our customers. Um, and also we have, say we have uh, Asian um, purchasing and sourcing teams um, established for the last decade or so, as well as our own Irish ones. So we have the supply lines in Europe and Asia that were able to kind of give us options. Um, PPE being the main one, obviously, that, that hit very quickly, like san uh, hand sanitizer, face masks, still ongoing. Uh, it goes up and down. Uh, but we have we stuck to our trusted partners, and that, I think we, we felt that was very important. Um, and it just meant we were able to provide. Um, the key was not to get kind of wrapped up in the in the race. As people were, as you know, from the news, people provided some some dodgy items at times. So we avoided that, which is sticking to principles and and the key suppliers. Um, and then in terms of challenges, I suppose they will be. The, the, the two main areas, staying safe and keeping a continuity of supply. And that's two things we've achieved. But it's an ongoing thing. It's something we, we can't really we can't really take a day off from. Sometimes they say we're lucky, but I guess you make your own luck. Um, our commercial team um, were very active um, in preparing for that. So those preparations didn't... Um, like Brexit went away almost from the... From the the newsreels for for a few months but we have to establish it because we have teams on the ground in the uk selling to pharmacies so we've established um a direct link so we 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 can we warehouse in the uk um so we can we can supply from within mainland uk as well as from 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 ireland so we have two options and we we said that very early doors all of our customers just wanted to know where they're going to be hit by supply issues so basically we worked around the uk for anything coming into ireland and we worked another solution for anything in the uk so we've almost got two entities now uh, but they're working in tandem so um but we our preparation was probably nearly 18 months ahead of schedule on that you know um, and that just allowed COVID to be something we were able to handle i'm sure if people were trying to manage both of those at the same time it was going to be a real pull in resources uh which uh, it's kind of actually 
come true quite calmly. First of January came, and it was just business as, as usual for us. We've been lucky like that. This brings us back to where we're at now. Um, it's made us, it's made everyone a bit smarter in terms of how you manage your day. Um, in some ways, people are probably getting more out of their day because um, there isn't the travel aspect. Um, uh, and I suppose it brought home just how much you can get done in a call or a meeting um, or how, how, how much you can achieve. Um, but for us, we have, would we'll say, a service department. So we would provide maintenance, calibrations. Um, we do them on site. We do them in house. Um, it, it's, it's and the, say the departments here in Limerick, um, and they would have always had to take calls, would we'll say, to help people because some lots of times things can be solved very quickly, and it's just phone, it's not an actual issue. It's somebody who's maybe not au fait with a product or a setting, um, and we've started to do say video calls for troubleshooting. And it's kind of brought home that that was always an option, but it was never really something that was used before. It was a phone call or a call out. And I said, well, actually, this is something we'll keep going forward. Um, even when we can meet people again, this is something very useful for everyone. Um, and we can, we, can, we can add to it. So it's, it's kind of changed how we think about the day to day and how we can actually reach out to more people. Um, we're looking to create more content in terms of um, training, video training and uh, things that so you can leave behind we still like to meet people to do it because you can gather more information from a customer in terms of um they might tell you more face to face or you might pick up on something that's maybe you feel there's a gap in the knowledge um but then we can send on a video just as a backup and say well look if you want to tap into this later on or in two weeks time when you've forgotten some of it that's there at your disposal so it's it's just made everyone that, that bit smarter, I think, uh, to use the technology that's been around. Um, but I guess there's still a lot of traditional thoughts in terms of how sales work. Um, so definitely um, it's improved things in a number of ways. Don't just don't forget to be there for your customers. And like it's it's, it's very hard sometimes to say things like that without sounding um, like a salesman or saying what what you mean and and it's, sometimes it's very hard to convey that message to customers without coming across like what are you after but but really we've tried to keep it really simple um like we we don't tend to promote whenever we provide donations or charities um and we we've done that over the years would we'll say internationally and um but, but during covid we really just are letting customers know look um we know you're busy, we know you're under pressure, um, and often it might just be an email, just um, uh, we're here if you need us, and as simple as that, just let them know you're there, you're not trying to push things on them, They're your, they've been your customers, you've developed relationships, um, and they trust you, so if they do, well then, they know that you have their back, um, as you always have, and it's basically just, just, let, just let them know you're there, because everyone's been under a lot of pressure, um, and that's it's been up and down um, over the last number of months. You say we all enjoyed a good Christmas, and then we faced January, and it was like, oh no, here we go again. Um, so people do actually need to know that. Look, if you need something, whether it's uh, if you're under pressure for PPE, or if, you, if, if you're under pressure for even for training, or you're having to take on some volunteers, um, that you can reach out to people and say, look, we'll, we'll come down. We'll make sure that they know how to use your products. We'll we'll make sure they know. It use the, the diagnostics, um, you know, just used us as a resource. And there's, there isn't always a sale in these things, but it, it, the last nine months, if it's taught as anything, is that everyone kind of has to band together to make it through it. So it's, um, that's very much the, the case now, I think. It's for the internally, and it was keep the head. It's, it's very simple advice. Um, keep your head, don't get wrapped up in things because I was, I was in a number of meetings very early on, um, let's say back in February, where they say it was, this was on the horizon, what was coming, and there was a kind of a call to arms companies that, okay, we're going to need everyone to start sourcing, uh, please don't take advantage, um, and and just trying to make sure we have the right quality out of it. That was the, the set of key, key call. 
Um, and then we met, we we'll say, a lot of the hospitals, we met a lot of uh, nursing homes, we met, say, all of the, say, the, the key stakeholders. And there was, there, was, there was words happening like Armageddon and uh, the surge, and there was a lot of very fearful words for understandable reasons because you know, the numbers were, were, were increasing. And we, we had this strange, it was a strange calmness there. I think that's because we were so, we, we knew we had a stock, we were prepared and we had a plan. We were able to put it into place quickly because we had a good infrastructure. But keeping ahead was very important because as you saw, a lot of things happened over the last nine months where things were bought and sold and recalled. Uh, quality wasn't always um, at the forefront, um, but it's, it's lives at stake basically. So you, we had to make sure that we probably lost out on sales because we took our time. We made sure that um, the quality was verified. A uh, number of times we, 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 we cost things before they came through because we weren't happy with it. Um, and that's because it's, it's a warm Buffett quote, I think it was, it takes 20 years to build your reputation and five minutes to ruin it. Um, and that's, that's very, uh, it stands time now with say during COVID that lots of people just chased some very big numbers and were looking at uh, what to get in. Some of the calls I had, you'd be looking at, you listen to people and say, hey, you should be ashamed of what, of what you're talking about. Uh, but if you keep the head and kind of know what you're there for, because COVID will come and COVID will pass um, and the vaccinations have been rolled out. Normality is, is going to resume. And people are going to get back to their lives. And we're a small island. We've handled things really well. And basically, we'll have to look at each other after all and know that we, we stood together and we looked after each other. And that, I think that's very, very important. So the, the fact that we, we keep the head and kind of keep our eye on the main thing, and that's patient care, quality of care, um, and who we are as a nation. And I think like if you can just bring that back into your business, uh, you'll do all right.